I think Islam hates us. They have done nothing except wreak havoc and terror for our faith and our religion. When we stand up to those who oppress our communities, that Allah accepts from us that as a form of jihad. Foundations of society are fragile. We must be the shepherds of our own civilization. If anyone answers either yes or no without making necessary distinctions, both are not telling the truth. They're lying. Father, we pray that your word will become a hammer that breaks rocks into pieces. That you will raise up in this nation pulpits and prophets that will call the nation back to repentance. Will you distance yourself from those who think differently or will you join us at the table and talk about what is really important? This is the Maida Initiative. Conversation will not come from mine. So thank you for being here. I'm, I'm really excited that we met. So, um, we just for, for everyone listening, uh, we've been connected with each other because you found out about the if, or at least your wife found out about the iftar dinner we hosted in Linwood two weeks ago, right? Correct. Um, this is really exciting for me because the I actually started the first one of these Christian Muslim iftars sort of four years, four Ramadans ago now, kind of by accident, and it's sort of kept growing every year, and it's and it's really exciting. And the premise of these dinners is to be able to connect Christians and Muslims, to be able to have honest conversations about worldview and help people make friendship from different cultures and ways of thinking. Yes. Uh, well, first of all, uh, let me introduce myself to you. Uh, my name is uh, Riaz Khan, and I'm serving on Makati City Council, so elected and appointed in 2019. Uh, originally, uh, I came from India almost like 30 years ago. So I'm here. Uh, I am also work at uh, Boeing as an engineer. And I'm also is a, this is SPIA, the Boeing uh, Union. I'm also a consul rep for them. So it's enjoying, very good. So, and also, I'm the president of the Islamic Center of Makaltiyo. So we plan to build a mosque in Makaltiyo. So there is no mosque, so here you go. It's going to be first mosque from, uh, you call like, uh, from ground level. I think I've seen petitions circling around for people who don't want that built. Uh, a lot of people, right, they, they started, but most of them were supportive. You know, it happens sometimes, you know, like offense, defense. Sure, and the stuff that works its way out to the rest of us from over the internet is always the more controversial stuff right correct it's, correct. it's, it's not a it's, it's not a good window into what's really happening no, actually right anything happens the so first people think we want to keep same way nobody wants to make some changes everybody wants to keep as it is but the change has to come no matter what the so change has to come and change will take place whether you support or you don't support is in the correct way as a positive way. If there is an improvement to improve, there is a way. When there is a will, there is a way. And things will move smoothly. Initially, right, when in the, in the Makaltiya started uh, about the airport, some people say it's no, some people say yes. Finally, is airport, is, airport work is done. The airport started. People are enjoying it. You know? Right, right. So, like same way. And then, whatever you do, people will put anything on you you know, to block your project, your aim, your dream. So if it's the right direction, it will happen. So that, that's that's going to be a crazy journey. Did you think when you moved to America, one, that you're going to be here permanently, or that you'd find yourself in like local government at some point? And I, when I moved to America, I never ever thought that I will reach to that level. You know what, it's already, there's an option given by the force of the choice. So I made a choice. I want to help the people. You know, I came from where the people have I'm basically going through so much trouble. And I'm here. I'm here to help and support, you know, the people. Uh, when I say the people, it's the needy people who needs my help. So, um, so, so, how, so, Rami, when you got elected to Makoteo City Council, I elected, I actually, I, I tried, you know, then I got elected, uh, first, uh, 2019, I got appointed. So basically I took the oath 
to start my term in 2020. Oh great. <laughs> That's a wonderful time to get into politics, right? It is it is you know. So it was very challenging. First of all, you know, I'm I got a project next to me about the mosque and the people gave, you know, the different names, the different versions, but is that's not true. The truth is we are the Muslims, we the people, we the Americans. When you see the constitution, we the people, we're talking about all american people american citizen my kids born here they raised here they go to school they go to college we are all americans we the people right and like we <laughs> what should i say i mean like when when we got together uh the different faith people everybody got when they talk about the god they talk about by different names the god in arabic allah the lord in different you know languages different names but the god is only one the people give different names so um so so on, so that's a very easy segue then before i before i do the segue um i'm curious what part of india you are you're from actually i'm from south india it's called hyderabad okay yeah, yeah i do know where that is <laughs> there's uh there's a city where uh there was a king uh the nizam was the richest man in the world at that time <laughs> so i'm from the city i've um i i've i've have accumulated a few friends from india over the years most of them are keralites which is even further south than you right correct correct then uh, you met you you met what part of india is ani from who, who ani is from south india as well it's called the uh, city uh, madras uh, called chennai is you know. So it's from South India. There are several states in South India, almost six states. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, I, I've had I've heard some of some of that. I'm. My, I mean, the Indian geography is just so vast, and I'm slowly, slowly, slowly starting to wrap my mind about it. But it's it's such a huge and diverse country. Correct. So. Um, So, so obviously how we met was specifically through Ramadan and the Ramadan is actually one of the quite things I get asked questions about most by other Christians because I think fasting and certainly fasting in general but Ramadan especially seems to me to be a much bigger deal in Islam than it is in Christianity or at least there's a very different emphasis So how would you describe what Ramadan is and why you fast? See, the Ramadan is one of the five pillars of Islam. And Ramadan is a time to practice in a self-restraint and self-reflection. Uh fasting is, you know, seen as a way to change the soul and empathy for those in the world who are hungry and less fortunate in ramadan right all the adults muslims and young age kids you know oh, fast from dusk uh, from dawn to dusk uh the basically this includes abstaining from drinking eating and immoral acts muslims also believe the holy quran right the quran was revealed in the month of ramadan so we we this is a chance this is a chance this is a time where people fast is is not easy but it becomes easy when you start thinking of the ramadan you know so basically in a in a ramadan what the people do is to see the sacrifice and sacrifice how the people are hungry in the world so they want to bring that image here how we feel about them so in in ramadan a uh, lot of muslims give charity like in islam is a fixed charity giving out to the people is 2.5% whatever you have uh, you know wealth so is giving out we have been involved so much we helping a lot of needy people the people uh, less fortunate to have home here and there we giving out a lot of blankets the food make sure we are just like 
anybody else. We are all our human beings. We have to help each other. We support each other in every time, every day, and anywhere. It's called humanity. So this is a pillar of Islam out of five. Um, and, and so I'm, I'm curious, there's a couple more sort of details that I've, I've heard thrown around, but sometimes when you hear things thrown around, they're, they're not always authentic ideas. Um, but one I've heard is that the idea that Satan is chained up uh, through the month of Ramadan, is, is that accurate? That is very true. It is said that the Satan is locked up at this time. Because the, when Satan comes, it you know basically is misguide the person. When it's something, when you give it a charity, it stops your hand. Hey, don't give it. Keep it to yourself. You know what? But the God says you have to give charity. And there are two things in my mind. And always I remember charity, right? Once you share your wealth, it multiplies. If you give a dollar, you get back $70. Somehow, somewhere, anywhere, it will come back to you. God doesn't need your money at all. You spend. Share your money. Share your wealth. Right? If you spend one person, you see in the future, you'll get it back. And the other thing is the knowledge. Whatever the knowledge you have, share the knowledge. And it multiplies. You know, don't keep it to yourself. Multiply it, share it, because you never know. It might help somebody else when you are not there. So therefore, it is said, you got to help. You have to do like two things. Share your wealth, share your knowledge. So, um, so and there's, and, and the temptations to not do that are like are kind of muted during Ramadan. So there's less external temptation saying, no, 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 keep that to yourself, build yourself up, and and the voices are mainly served God and others. So in the month of Ramadan, right, you you become like a real human being. That means no backbiting. You are not wasting any time. You are thinking nothing but only God. So God gives your life, and God will take life. God is the only one. We believe in the Allah. You know, in the month of Ramadan, the most important thing is sacrifice. And, and so another thing that I've, I've, I hear people talking about quite a lot, which I, I'm still kind of growing in my understanding of, um, is this is um, Layat Adul Qadr. Am I saying that right? The Night of Power? Yeah, Layat Adul Qadr. Yes. The Layat Adul Qadr is a night. In the night, you have to pray. You know what? If you spend the same thing, like if you spend a minute, it's again multiply. So that is a, the biggest night in the whole Ramadan. Actually, it comes in uh, like uneven days, the odd days, you know. So the 21st, 23rd, 25th, 27th, and 29th, the night of the Ramadan. You have to pray those nights. So you don't quite know when when it's going to happen. No, that, that is the only thing. If we know, we pray only that night. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so God says, you know what, you have to search for it, look for it, you know, it's going to come. It's there, but you look for it. You have to search for it. <laughs> that is the thing. And, and, and so, the, is the idea there that that is the night that Allah is closest to earth? What, what, so what, why is one night especially more powerful than is it because that's the night the Quran was revealed on or see the the Quran is revealed in the entire Ramadan you know so those nights are very important nights you have to pray you have to look for look for the Qadr that means the, the great night you have to look for it you have to dig into it you have to pray for it you have to beg for Allah for forgiveness mm-hmm. <laughs> that's very important night I think I think those those nights are very important nights when your prayers are accepted okay um, so th- that makes sense so that's why Muslims put such a large emphasis on praying on those three nights in the last in the last 10 days of Ramadan so uh, I think one, th- one thing I've 
one thing I've noticed in um, one thing I've noticed is that in some ways there are some similarities between the way the Bible approaches fasting and um, Islam approaches fasting, but there's uh, there's some big differences as well. So one thing, the biggest thing that fasting is used for in like the Torah, in the Jewish scriptures, is that it's mostly about repenting. That you're fasting, the nation usually fasts when somebody has done something terrible and there's a plague, there's a famine, there's an enemy army invading, and then they fast to seek God's help. Or when David has sinned and his child is on the verge of death, he fasts in the hope that God will that God will um, save his child. Um, in the New Testament, a lot of that actually shifts. We don't really see fasting for repentance in the same way as much after Jesus comes. And in some ways, the fasting Jesus goes through is almost the opposite of the idea of Ramadan. It, it, because when Jesus fasts, that's when Satan shows up most strongly in Jesus' life. So in um, Matthew um, in Matthew 4, it says, Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil and was fasting 40 days and 40 nights. He was hungry. And the tempter came to him and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him up to the holy city and set him on a pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you are the son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you. And on, the, and on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, Again it is written, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. And again the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, all these I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, Be gone, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and were ministering to him. So Jesus basically goes through a period of fasting on the verge of really starting his public life. Because the way the Bible presents Jesus is that he doesn't really do very much before he's 30, right? He's a good son, uh, he works a normal job, and his public ministry starts at 30. You know, very similar to the way Muhammad lived a regular life before he started his work, right? Correct. Um, so, but, uh, the, but right as Jesus' work begins, he goes through this period of fasting, which is essentially this preparation for, uh, for his work. And the essence of fasting biblically is in what Jesus says when Satan tells him to eat, which is man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the Lord. So typically, the reason Christians fast isn't for repentance, uh, because we believe that that's all kind of covered on the cross at this point. But typically we fast because we are, it's, it's times when we're looking for God's guidance in our in our life, right? Correct. See, the thing is, Muslims believe all the prophets, right? And the Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the last prophet, the last messenger. We believe in David, the Muslims call Dawud, Jesus, Isa alayhi salam. When we say the salam, Peace be upon him. Right? With respect. Respect to the Jesus. Respect to the David. So respect to the Adam. When you say Allah, salam, peace be upon him. So this all the chain of this one, all the prophets came one after the other, one after the other. And all the four books, they're very important books. You know, as you, as you mentioned, you know what? All the books were given and they listed. They call all holy books. We have to respect them. Jesus, we call Esau, we have seen the miracles. Yes, we believe him as a prophet. And Muhammad, peace be upon him, we believe him as a, as a prophet. And he is. And when 
the word satan is disbelieving not obeying the the words the the given instruction from the god right when the adam is upon him when he said he 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 misguided right so everything started from there you know what you are not when when the god says you don't do this one you accept it if you want to do it let's call it satan type you know what is right in in satan's mind so satan always stops people if you do something good when you pray it stops hey go to work it's okay you go to work but first the prayer <laughs> you have to pray you have to pray there then take care of families and go to work who is going to stop you but the thing is they the day must start and finish with your prayers but every time i get up in early morning i pray to god god thank you so much for giving me another day to show what i am here you know giving me another chance to pray i am very fortunate to have every day is a blessed day in you know and i hope and everybody gets the same chance like me and you and everybody else you know we do not want the violence in the whole world we have to pray for the peace and prosperity for the whole the whole people the whole mankind in the world that is what we need right now we need we need to follow whatever the god says love each other do not hate nobody you know we have no rights stop what is going on you know we have no right to kill anybody we have to respect each other we have to love each other um right so i'm curious so you've got the set times of fasting in islam in ramadan do you is it is it kind of a common practice for muslims to kind of do extra fasting outside of those times actually right you can fast any time you can fast any time there's no restrictions but the ramadan is given 30 days is the blessing month right where the satan as you said right <laughs> is going to locked up for 30 days so i think whatever you do is accepted and it multiplies your rewards and other than the ramzan you can fast there is no there is no such thing you cannot fast you know uh, even uh, the prophet muhammad used to fast like two days you know especially on on mondays he used to fast so there are the most benefits when you fast health wise you know it it purifies your body it keep you healthy you know it avoids you lot of lot of you know so getting disease in your body you know. so fast is the fasting is prescribed to everyone the people who came before all of us is coming when the world started so if a muslim fast outside of ramadan what is the usual motivation for that is it for is it because they're looking to get a specific blessing is it because they're looking to get some a sin forgiven is it what would you say is usually the reason why people fast outside of ramadan see outside of ramadan right so prophet muhammad he used to fast on mondays and you know other day like some thursday you know so that means they are following the sunnah the sunnah means whatever he did we have to be like you know just like following his his version you know whatever he did i mean we are doing same way the same path so there's nothing wrong to fast any other day of uh, of the whole year and right now the doctors prescribing if you want to get healthy fast <laughs> that that's that's a good thing there are reasons this is a fast you know when it was said i mean many years ago Muhammad peace be upon him he said right you have to fast you know those mondays and now is becoming like practical life now not only muslims but non muslims also fast other than ramadan so the so the main thing then isn't necessarily a specific um it, it's it's all, it's like based on the idea that in islam muhammad is the best of all creation and that if you want to live a righteous life you imitate him as closely as possible and fasting is a way to imitate him as closely as possible see the past uh, the fasting is prescribed to everyone <laughs> as i said right is coming from years and years when i was a little kid I started fasting when i was 10 years old so even my son he is like 8 years old and he does he love to do it even in fasting days 
I play uh, soccer sometimes. I play, you know, so cricket sometimes. So when the people say, you know what, people get tired. No, more power, the more strength. the more motivation comes because the football players look this you know nba nfl players they do same thing you know during the fasting i think is coming like a is a natural is a natural power in the body <laughs> uh, that 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 makes sense um so i think probably christians and muslims fast for similar reasons sometimes but the big difference is that there's no kind of christian ramadan in the same way in that we we don't have like a set time of year to fast um th- th- there's no there's no actually in the bible itself which commands us to fast anywhere there's just examples of people fasting from the story right all right so at bible study i usually go i go to the quran study i see the difference uh in the bible study right there are the groups some of them they do practice on old testament and another group is believe in new testament and the old testament says you should not be eating at all and the new one says oh you can eat little bit and drink little bit as needed you mean like for fasting or the fasting so there 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 is there is a uh, there are two groups talk in different way like the new testament is allowed to drink during the fasting well and and the quran and the quran is never been changed nothing will happen at all in the quran is written as it is there is no new is no old is only one quran and a lot of people ask you know what um, what will happen if the quran is not there but there are people they have memorized the whole quran at the age of 10 beginning and they memorize whole from page 1 to the last page it goes in the heart nobody can take it out is 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 a quran once you start reading the quran it goes in your heart once you start reading it tells you keep on reading keep going oh i finished one page oh go for second one third one you never stop this is this is called the sweetness of the quran so so uh, the the new testament and the whole bible would be um it would be the same way right people have memorized the bible as well i mean it's larger so people tend to memorize it in smaller chunks but it's it's not beyond memorization but just to clarify when we say old and new testament the you know it's it's just it's just a matter of sort of timing right in the same way you know the if, if you kind of say there's just the quran well presumably the new test the injil and the torah kind of function like the old testament for you right because you believe in abrogation so it's we don't really believe the new testament is abrogated the old testament but with things like fasting there's actually no commandments for fasting in the torah and the prophets at all here and jesus doesn't tell people you have to fast what he does is he just tells people when you fast right he just kind of assumes people are going to be fasting he says when you fast don't let anyone see that you're fasting right don't make your face you know angry and put on your fasting face right but to you know you, you were not supposed to live out this out so we're seen by others we're supposed to um you know we're supposed it's between us and god when we when we fast and if if we're kind of going around being like oh gosh i'm fasting it so hard today then it's defeating the entire point of fasting it you know what the same way is in islam like like the charity wise is the same way if you're giving charity with your right hand left hand should not know what are you doing with the right hand you know you should hide to yourself and the god knows your intention and your whatever is inside your heart and the god has whole communication right there <laughs> you know there is no such thing i mean like if you're trying to show off look i'm giving 100 dollars 200 dollars you know there's something else this that will go under some sort of fundraising type look competing each other you know i'm giving 100 dollars is there any way 
anybody can give two hundred dollars. Just call, like you know, sh- telling people, look, we should give the charity. But once you're helping someone, you don't have to tell anybody. Look, I'm helping this person. I'm helping that person. No, when you give the charity, make sure it stays with you and the God. And God knows your intention, how you are giving. Right, and that's exactly the same. Jesus specifically says, you know, don't even let your right hand know what your left hand is doing. Correct. That we 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 you know we do this not to be seen by others, but for for God's sake, right? Not for how people perceive us. I totally believe you. This see, see that same thing, same same, the same law: left hand, right hand, right hand, left hand. <laughs> you know, help each other. That's the only thing is, you look at the people. The poor people, how to survive? You know what the God has given you and me and other people is your duty to help other people. If you stop, the God will stop. If you keep on giving, it continues from there. So God is watching you. Lo, you know what you are giving person. Okay, give gives more, more and more. You giving out more and more, more and more. If you stop, God says, if you stop, look, I'm going to pick somebody else. Who can give away? <laughs> you know, see all all the prophets. They were so humble. They taught good lessons to, to the mankind. You know, treat everyone well. Islam talks about your wives. Be nice to your wives. Be nice to your kids. Obey your parents. Be nice to your teachers. Be a community member. You know, support each other. Be a role model to yourself. People should say, "Oh, I want to be just like him when I grow up." You know, people talk about going to Jannah. Jannah is like a paradise, right? I want to go Jannah, Jannah. You know what? Once I was young, my mother said, "You know what? Jannah should asking God, oh God, I want this person to send him to Jannah. I'm waiting for him. So therefore, do good things." So that Janna can accept you right away. Janna will be praying to the God. Oh, I need this person in the Janna. <laughs> so this is something I'm actually noticing um, across a, a number of subjects in Christianity and Islam. That basically all these things are just as connected in the Bible as they are in Islam. But there's there's a different. There's just all there is a difference of timing. So the idea is, you know, you don't take revenge in Islam in the hopes that God will give you a reward for not taking revenge, right? Correct. You get, do good to others in the hopes that God will give you a reward. In the New Testament, the way it's described is that God has already given us that reward through Jesus. So we believe that you know, God has already given us paradise uh, as a guarantee through Jesus' death on the cross and all his goodness to us. Therefore, we are mandated to have God's generosity to us flow out to other people. So they're connected. And it's just one is kind of upstream, the other is downstream. See, revenge is always like a weak and narrow-minded people person personality. You know, revenge should not be at all there. What is revenge? If you hit me, I hit you back? No. There's called sacrifice. If you hit somebody hitting, have patience. Ask God. You never know. One day he turned to be your friend. You know what? Revenge is not acceptable. Revenge should not be taken away. So let God judge. You know, there are people, they try to do it, hurt it. That is what the, the Ramadan is there. Sacrifice. You look for it. Make sure you show your dignity. Make sure you're not a weak, narrow-minded person. You know what? Have patience and the God will judge. Right, seeing thing, see, you're seeing things from God's perspective in the hopes that he will act mercifully to you and not avenge your sin. Correct. Um, well, great. Well, um, so if people want to find you and find the work you're doing in Makoteo, where's the best place that they can look you up? Man, like Makoteo, if you say Riyaz Khan, the car will come to my home. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> again, again, we, we, we are all Muslims in Makaltio, Washington State, the whole country, right? We believe in the United States Constitution. We believe in. We believe in the law of the land. And we believe in humanity. And we help people. And there are so many people 
in the Muslim community. They are in the Marines, Army, Air Force, Navy, National Guard. And Muslims are the doctors. Muslims are engineers, the teachers. And the Muslims now, I'm encouraging, should take part in the politics. So I'm opening for the Muslims for the door to get inside. Look how I'm doing. You can do it. Let's do it together. I'm supporting people. I'm providing leadership classes. I'm motivating them. Let build the our group. When I say the group is the diverse group. So my, my whole intention is to get into politics, is help each other, bring peace to the planet. <laughs> well, I did have some loaded trick political questions to ask you, but I've lost the paper with them on. <laughs> so we'll have to save those for another time. Sure. Um, but Riaz, thank you so much for being on the show. And thank you guys for listening to the Almighty Initiative podcast. We'll be back in the next episode.